Head over to thebestsongever.com and purchase our new hit, Together Again. It is a cover of Smokey Mike and the God King. That's Jeremy Boring and Michael Knowles. And with your help, we will smash our way onto the Billboard charts. We've got this. Ladies and gentlemen, I am going to say this unequivocally. Ron DeSantis has disqualified himself. There is no circumstance in which I will vote for this man. What are you, Gavin Newsom? You going to get him off the ballot? <laughs> no, no, he, <laughs> kidding, he, he, can, he can do whatever he wants. Take a look at this video. Let me play it for you, and you can hear it for yourself. Do we have uh, audio queued up? And real quick, fellow GOP 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy saying he will remove himself from the Colorado ballot unless Trump's eligibility is restored. Would you do the same? No, I think that's just playing into the left. Um, I think the case will get overturned by the Supreme Court. But I've qualified for all the ballots. I'm competing in all the states, and I'm going to accumulate the delegates necessary. That's the whole name of the game in this situation. But I do anticipate that that decision was political and will get reversed. All right, Governor Ryan. For that, he has disqualified himself. Do you know what Vivek is really, really good at? Vivek is really good. Maybe this, he's read too much Robert Greene, 48 Laws of Power. He's really good at making these bold power moves yeah. and forcing everyone else to react yep. to what he's doing. That, to me, is I political wanna, strategy at its finest. We have to address this. Ron DeSantis says that's playing into the left. I don't, it makes no sense. It literally makes no sense. It makes no sense. If the move of the left is to remove Donald Trump so that someone else wins the primary, Ron said, I know what they did is political, and I have secured the delegates, and that's the game. And if you want to be really pedantic, the California Supreme Court and the left are not synonymous, because there's lots of leftists. Colorado are, Supreme Court. Sorry, Colorado. There's lots of leftists who are, I know like people on Twitter freak out. There's lots of leftists who are pro-democracy in this sense, who find this unconscionable. Mm -hmm. I, I, I will call out, look, Robert, Carlson, Robert Kennedy Jr. is not a right winger. He, right. He's like, this is crazy. Tucker Carlson said on IRL on Monday at TPUSA that the people representing Ron DeSantis online are some of the nastiest zero sum people he's ever seen. And instantly they all lose their minds. Can you name names? Because who's he referring to? Well, because someone I'm friends with, like Laura Loomer, I like Laura, right? Mm. She is, goes for the jugular every time. Does she work for Trump? No, no. no. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, right, Christina so, Peshaw. You, okay. She's Ron's second in command. Sure. She, 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 she on the internet behaves as though she and Laura Loomer are the exact same person doing the exact same things. Okay. And now at first I said, now hold on there just gosh darn minute. <laughs> in that voice. In that voice. <laughs> Laura Loomer is just a fan of Trump. Right. And Christina Peshaw is, is Ron's second in command. For what reason is the, the like press campaign, press secretary and second in command arguing with fans of Donald Trump. And that's the world they live in. So, at first I say, this doesn't reflect on, on, on DeSantis in terms of the nastiness of his supporters online, but the fact that he won't fire them absolutely does. So when Tucker said, it doesn't reflect on Ron, but these people are, it absolutely does. Of course they're yeah. Why won't he fire Redfern, Griffin, and, and Peshaw? If Ian was on, on Twitter, like, spouting Nazi ideology, and you're going to be like, well, it's his opinion, like, that's crazy. Depending, de I'm, but I got to be honest, like, we have a very strong free speech bent sure, but, this, uh, fine. this company, but you're, you're right. I, and I've said this over and over again. There is a threshold of I'm course. willing to tolerate. Yes, I, 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 I have said free speech, not for those who don't believe in free speech. Nice. Anybody wants to come in here, advocate for fascism and taking away people's rights. I'm going to say I'm not going to defend yours. You don't. Or, or at, least I'm not gonna, I, at least I don't have to hire you. It's freedom of oh, association. Yeah. You hire yes, and work with whoever yes, you want. Yeah. Ron DeSantis is here. He said it. The, the last part of this is the most important part. Not the I won't remove myself, whatever. The last part of this is what matters. Let me play it again. No, I think that's just playing into the left. Um, I think that that was meaningless, by the way. It makes no sense. Yeah, but anyway, the case will get overturned by the Supreme Court. But I've qualified for all the ballots. I'm competing in all the states and I'm going to accumulate the delegates necessary. That's the whole name of the game in this situation. The whole name of the game is for him to accumulate the delegates. He will not remove himself, even if Trump has re has been removed. He thinks Trump will be put back on. It's political. I'm getting all these DeSantis people saying, Oh, yeah, but, you know, he's saying he knows it'll be overturned. I'm like, that's meaningless. If that were true and he thought 100% Trump would be back on the ballot, then he would say, Vivek's right. I, I will absolutely remove myself from the primary process because it's not a real race. 
No, he said the opposite. He said the name of the game is get the delegates and I'm not backing down. I'm going to win. I, he, I, he is no different than a Democrat. I have seen not one time in this primary where Ron DeSantis did a bold move or took a strong stand on anything, not one. which is shocking to me. No, it would have been more interesting if he beat Vivek to the punch yes. here, right? Because that's the thing. Now, Vivek, yep. who knows everyone else? He, we talk about it all the time. Republicans are not unified. There are a bunch of people who obviously don't want Trump to become the nominee, theoretically Vivek included, right? Because sure. he's campaigning for president. So he was the first one to say, well, I would leave it. And now all of them who actually don't want to leave the race either follow suit, meaning that he is the leader, or they argue and then they see anti-Trump, which isolates the base. His entire governorship is bold move, bold move, leftist freak out headline, bold move, bold move, bold move. But as but he's running as you would think a Nikki Haley candidacy would be run. He's running worse than Nikki Haley. Worse, but I mean, it's, she's it's, pulling it's, better I, than he I, is. I don't understand. And what I see is, I didn't support Donald Trump in 2016. I, we have criticisms on this show of Trump. We have debates over police as an institution, abolition of police. We have, we have fairly nuanced conversations. The left doesn't want to come on the show. Well, screw them. They don't have to, but they should. And when it comes to the likes of uh, Donald Trump, as I said, uh, Luke Rudkowski will come on here and criticize Trump to no end, even at one point saying he wouldn't vote for him. And then he, sure enough, went and voted for him. Luke voted? Luke says he voted for Trump. Mm, okay. <laughs> I well, guess yeah, we, I guess we know who the real anarchist is after all. That's right. That's right. But my point is this. Me, Michael. You have. Yeah. Your brother. I hate him. <laughs> you have Ron DeSantis' supporters, prominent journalists and personalities and personnel at the Daily Wire who are saying things that come off as the most pathetic, desperate lies to defend Ron DeSantis. Matt Walsh came, uh, said something that I thought was just it was cringe. He criticized Vivek saying, what's the point of doing this, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, it is the most unbelievable thing, an inauthentic thing a person could say, acting as though they don't understand what Vivek was doing. Right. We all get it. Vivek is in third place in the lesser known GOP debates. He's in fourth place in the primary, and he's still doing power moves, and we know exactly why he's doing it. To act like you think it makes no sense is, in my opinion, it's cringe, man. There, there, there are journalists that we've had on the show. Obviously, we're friends with Matt. We, I, I like the guy. I think he's fantastic. But I'll criticize who I think deserves it. And they're, they're on Twitter, Dave Rubin, acting like Ron DeSantis did the right thing here. And I'm like, dude, I don't care what you think. Okay, we can be friends. We can have dinner. That's kind of the point. But no one believes you. When you come out and you're like, I think Ron did the right thing. You don't believe that. Now you're losing all your credibility. Because he's outright saying he's going to win the delegates after they removed Trump from the race. And that's the game. No, it isn't. And here's the not thing. The game isn't, I want to play. isn't Colorado way down the line in terms of when they actually- Super vote? Tuesday. Yeah, so like Colorado is not going to be determinative in, in any case. By Super Tuesday, it's probably going to be close to wrapped up, maybe down to two people. Right. So this wouldn't even cost him anything else if he- uh, On the other hand, let's play devil- I'll play, let me play devil, devil's advocate with you. What if the concern with DeSantis is that Vivek is being the leader among the Plan B people, and if Ron agrees with him, that's going to be used as, look, Ron DeSantis can't even leave within the, within the primary. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, and Vivek, at least no. in the 538 polls uh, after the last debate, he jumped over Christie. Christie and he were sort of neck and neck, and he's, wow. he's jumped I mean, up. that's bad for Vivek. That, he must have had some kind of big pogo stick. I think part, yeah, that's true. But you ever seen those, is, those extreme pogos? Oh, yeah. Where they do flips and stuff? <laughs> yeah. That's super cool. But I think part of it is that Vivek has uh, charisma, and when he's on stage, he can really command attention, right? He had his, like, And he's also got notebook. nothing to lose. Right. And yeah. so at this point, why not? I mean, the, the thought, what I heard from some people was like, it's easy to say I'll come off the ballot when you think they're going to terminate their campaign anyways, which also puts him in a strong position. It's one of the reasons that people want Donald Trump back in the White House, because he could only serve one more term anyways. Right. So imagine what he would do. Uh, it's a very similar mindset. And I think, this again, is, that's a threat uh, uh, to DeSantis. Let me give you an example. Ryan Saavedra, he said in response, I said, I, I tweeted, no one see, no one on us sees anything other than Ron trying to win power. If he really believed it, he would, uh, he, it would be overturned. He would agree with Vivek. Saavedra tweeted, one, Trump's team filed a lawsuit to have DeSantis thrown off the ballot, which Tim Pool ignores. This is why I despise these people. Sorry, Ryan. This is the cringiest, most despicable thing. Is Ryan a DeSantis person? Yes. Okay. When this happened, we all talked about it. You want me to go back to May and be like, well, I know it's happening now with Trump, but let's go back in time six months to discuss an old news story that's not relevant right now. 
Well, of course we talked about it. Whenever these stories come up, we talk about it. The whole debate we had was over whether or not Ron, first, it's whether Ron could be Trump's VP. That que- that's out of the question. And whether or not Ron was in violation of laws pertaining to using his funds from, from, from the governor's race for the presidential race. And we've had numerous conversations about his staff uh, working between the campaign and his, uh, and, and his office. That conversation happens all the time. And now he's like, Tim ignores it. They're just lying. And anyone... You, you, Hold on. Let me, let me. I don't know, Ryan, but let me, it could be that he just doesn't know. So he doesn't mean he's lying. He just could be ignorant. Why is he bringing up a story from May? Because in this case, it's showing that he, he's trying to claim that Trump's being a hypocrite. So he's claiming I'm a hypocrite. No, he, he could be he claiming Tim that... Pool ignores. He, he could be playing that in terms of him not knowing your record as opposed to lying so he's making instead of looking into it at Correct. all Correct. He, maybe he was lazy I'm so, just, so I'm, he's fabricating or lazy i i i, I don't accept lazy okay that's C- fine considering just, considering the fact that ron's supporters have this this is their mo this is one example i don't know them as well as you do okay th- th- this is no matter what ron does there's some defense for it okay when we had laura loomer and bill mitchell on debating trump v desantis so i yeah i asked bill mitchell why are the desantis people attacking me and he says, Laura Loomer tweeted, and Alex Brusewitz, and I said, Bill, stop. I'm not Laura Loomer. I'm not Alex yeah. Brusewitz. Why are they tweeting at me? And he goes, Laura Loomer. And I said, I don't care. Yeah. Why are you tweeting at me? This is what they do. They, they, they see something from a fan of Trump's. They grab onto it, and then they make shit up. So this is a topical news program. When Donald Trump was challenging DeSantis, of course we talked about it. We talked about it in numerous contexts. There's no reason to say this other than you're trying to mislead your audience and act like we don't care that Trump does these things. When Laura Loomer tweeted a, uh, a fake tweet, we presume, from Christina Peshaw, that Christina Peshaw tweeted the same thing. I said, the DeSantis campaign, the DeSantis people are the scumbags they claim Trump are. They immediately ran with it, but Trump doesn't care, or Tim doesn't care when Trump does it. I said, is Laura Loomer on Trump's campaign? And they all, they all think, th- th- this, is the, this is why I say, okay, I'm done with these people. They view themselves like... We're on stage at a rock concert and Donald Trump is here. And I thought Ron DeSantis was up here with us and we were debating what the next song in the set was going to be. I now realize, thanks to the DeSantis fans, Donald Trump is up on stage. We're standing here behind him, cheering him on. And down there in the audience, in the mosh pit, arguing with, you know, with Rick, who's selling cotton candy, is Ron DeSantis in his campaign. And they're screaming at us on stage. And I said, ah, why am I even bothering talking to these people? I shouldn't be yelling down to the to the audience and the fans. Let let them watch the show and do their thing. Ron DeSantis is not a serious contender. His influencers are not even viewing themselves as on par with the Trump campaign. So we shouldn't even be debating him. He's done. Well, I think he is. I think the, the fact seems pretty clear that his campaign is just completely imploded. I've never seen anything like it in my lifetime, probably. And he's never gained. I mean, Trump is still polling at like, what, 60 percent there. Do no you, one has been able to close that gap. Here's the question for the table. And I, I can go either way, but I, I'm leaning toward, towards one, one way or the other is, is the answer is, is this 4D chess from the Democratic establishment to force Trump to be the nominee, thinking he'd be much more beatable if he's got felonies? I mean, felonies? that was one of the things well, DeSantis said today. You got this. Pollster. I think this was, um, who was this? This was, uh, what's his face? What's the pollster's name that no one cares about anymore? Frank Luntz. Was that was this Luntz who said this? Yeah, Luntz. He said uh, this Supreme Court ruling from uh, uh, Colorado, it, Trump is now more likely to beat Biden because of this. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that is just because they're playing 4D chess doesn't mean they're good at it. So in their thinking, their normie thinking, they could be like, no one's going to vote for a felon. No one's right. going to vote for blah blah blah. No one's going to vote for. Th- they saw this. This was their 2016 strategy. Pied Piper. One, once we make right, once we make him out to be a white nationalist Nazi, no one's going to vote for him. It's going to be clear. <laughs> you have to vote for Hillary. And basically, the message was every single day, you have to vote for Hillary. You have to vote for Hillary. Every right thinking person is voting for Hillary. Mm-hmm. Just ask us. And then everyone voted and went into the booth and raised their finger said nah I'm, you know I'm that trump. in swing states not only does trump have a lead uh i think he's leading in seven and tied in two but some it, are double digit double digits mm-hmm. but more importantly among people who did not vote in 2020 trump holds a 40 percent lead in michigan holy and like crap. a 27 percent lead in georgia holy crap new voters swinging towards trump you know why the rent's too damn high yeah <laughs> They, they can't I, you should have like him this. on the show, Jim McMillan, <laughs> if he's still alive. It is. The cost of food. Uh, there's a meme that's going around. I love it. You know the who radicalized you meme? 
And it's of like the course, NPC. Yes. The new one is a guy saying, angrily saying, my grocery bill. And it's a, pic it's a picture <laughs> yeah, of a yeah, receipt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, we, I went out to eat at a, we went to a Mexican restaurant today. I got, we got fajitas, guacamole, and a pupusa. How much do you think that cost? $37. What do you think? I, 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 I don't even really know what half mm, those things are. Maybe it was 36 let, just for let, the fajita. Fajita, wait, let me, let me speak. Like, let, a sit down restaurant? We went to hold a, on, like a sit down? $57. Let me, let me, let me, let me give you guys a, 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 a painted picture. It was approximately, I don't know what, three or 400, no, 300 square feet, maybe 200 square feet, small. Okay. Uh, I would estimate eight to 12 tables. Okay, I know those those types. Yeah. With fast, casual, bar style, small Mexican restaurant. Around here? Yeah. Okay. So not a high class sit down. I got you. We're talking wood chairs and a table. So fajita, I would guess. Chicken fajitas. So this is chicken breast. I don't chicken fajitas. So chicken yeah. fajitas yeah, are eleven ninety five. I would guess. What are the other two things? We ordered guacamole. Guacamole is going to be eight ninety five. And a pupusa. I don't know what that is. It right. is a stuffed flour tortilla. Oh yeah, yeah. With okay, chicken so that's going to be like six ninety five. I would say. And plantains. Plantains oh. will be what like plantains. six also. Uh, what do you think the total cost? So of those? 12, 13, plus 12, 25, plus, so like 34. Yeah, my guess was up there with 34, but what now think? that I'm thinking of inflation, I'm looking at I feel 18, like it was, it's like $65. $18 fajitas, 57 bucks. No. 47. 47 Wow, bucks. so that's a third more than, than it would have been like not that long ago. $47.50, not a high-end restaurant. I mean, I'm not trying to disrespect this restaurant. It was really good food. Um, but this was a local, small, like, it was a strip mall. A strip mall uh, Mexican you know, restaurant. You know why this makes me so angry? And this is why I'm very like end the Fed and all this other stuff. Because inflation is a tax on poverty. Yes. Mm -hmm. It hurts poor people first and foremost. And it, oh, it, oh, it oh. just drives me crazy. Michael, do you think that, uh, 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 you know this, but l let me just stress this for the people listening. Inflation is good for the wealthy. Yeah. You, 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 you want to know what the, what the wealthy love about inflation? When the costs go up, it means their net worth goes up. Yeah, right. But a poor person who needs to buy chicken and they're not making enough money, they can't buy that food for their family now. For the, for the for the wealthy investor, they're like, what's inflation at? Oh, so what's 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 my property at? Right, right. Wow, my car is up 7%, my my house is up 7%. Wait, the, wait, wait. the the hard assets we own from our, you know, our insert you know, factory, building, whatever, all, all those are more expensive now. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.